The driver says he can't wait any longer. I distinctly told Slade to meet us here at the station. Did he get the message? I left to write in his desk. I could strangle him. I knew what he looked like. Well, let's go. felt as though there were a trip hammer inside, having a big day for itself. Someone tricked me for fair. Knockout drops. Someone who made sure I wouldn't keep my appointment to go out on the afternoon stage. If there's anything I hate, it's being played for a fool. Especially by someone I didn't even know. As a matter of fact, by anybody. I guess wrecking my office was another means of delaying my trip from Denver to Deadwood. Ahead of schedule. It's due in any minute. Oh, no. Tell me, Dupree will throw a fit if there's not a crowd around to greet her. Say, could you get over to the depot and see what you could do? Why me? Well, she'll, she'll appreciate having a woman meet her. All right. But from what I've heard, she'd prefer a man. Any man. Clumsy oak, you're stepping on my skirt. I'm sorry, Jenny. So where is everybody? Or is this the sort of reception one gets in Deadwood? Your stage arrived ahead of schedule, Mr. Prey. There wasn't time to change the plans for your welcome. I'm Monica Bristol. Mr. Kruger asked me to meet you and help out in any way I can. And who is Mr. Kruger? Ward Kruger, the owner of the Gay Lady, where you're going to sing tonight. If I sing tonight. From the looks of this town, I may not care to. Well, don't just stand there. Get my things off to the hotel. And make sure that my accommodations are acceptable. My dear, I would very much like something hot to drink, if that isn't expecting too much in this barbarous community. Of course, Madame Dupre. The famous Delmonico himself has opened a branch of his New York restaurant here. It's called the Bean Bucket. <laughs> After you... Your bags have already been put in your room, Mr. Prey. I hope you won't find the accommodations too utterly uncivilized. Only the people, my dear. <clears throat> you know, everyone in Deadwood is looking forward to your performance tonight. We have no zoo here. <laughs> Obviously, or you would be running around loose. <laughs> I'll call you if I need you. You must understand my desire to be alone. Looking at you has given me such a dreadful headache. <laughs> Thank you.
you please tell me which room Miss Jenny Dupre is staying in? Who are you? Oh, uh, name's Slade, Marshal. How long you been at Deadwood? Why? I ask the questions around here. What's your interest in Jenny Dupre? I think that's a matter between me and Mr. Dupre, don't you? Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Room 214, thanks. I'll announce myself. Mr. Dupre is not seeing anyone. Would you like to bet? Now, look here. You give me trouble, I'll throw you in jail. Just a minute, Marshal. Jenny, I mean, Mr. Dupre has a great many male admirers. It's quite possible that Mr. Slade is one of them. Are you by any chance a... A friend of hers? No, I'm here on business. And if Mr. Prey has any objections to seeing me, I'll let her tell me. Hold it. Hold it, Marshal. Never mess around with a six-gun like that, Marshal. If you got any cause to make an arrest, speak up and say what's on your mind. If I agree with you, I'll go along peaceably. Here. But just what's eating you, anyway? Somebody tried to kill Mr. Prey a half hour ago. She hurt? The bullet barely missed her. You can't go in there. I'll have you jailed for resisting arrest. If somebody tried to kill Mr. Prey, why aren't you out looking for him? Open up and Slade. Well, Monica. Hello, Slade. Small world, isn't it? Yes, I didn't know you were here in Deadwood. Of course you didn't. Let's see. The last time we saw each other was in Cheyenne, wasn't it? Or was it Denver? You do get around so much. Well, this is just great. You have no idea how surprised I am. <clears throat> I'll just bet you are. Come in, won't you? Madame Dupre has been simply beside herself waiting for you to show up. Oh, it's all right, Marshal. Uh, Mr. Slade is an old, old acquaintance of mine. Mr. Dupre? Mr. Slade, you were supposed to leave with me when I left Denver. What happened? Well, someone went to a lot of trouble to make sure I didn't meet you. I don't like excuses. Well. I'm beginning to feel better already. Oh, thank you very much for staying with me, my dear, but you can leave now. Mr. Slade and I have business matters to discuss. I'll uh, look you up later, Monica. Yes, you do that. <laughs> Isn't it a shame? Isn't what a shame? That there aren't better shots in this world. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a private investigator. No? What's one supposed to look like? Oh, I don't know. I sort of imagined a fierce-looking, scowling little man hiding behind bushels of false whiskers. They're supposed to ask interminable questions. Well, I'm sorry about the whiskers, but I do have to ask the question. You know, I think it'd be a lot better if you set up. Well, it began six weeks ago. I had an engagement to sing in St. Louis. When I got to my hotel, there were six red roses in a vase in my room. Go on. There was a note. It said, oh, how can you possibly believe me? It sounds so melodramatic. What did the note say? It said, to Jenny, six roses, six weeks to live. And it was signed, your ultimate admirer. Is that all? The next week, I was in Chicago, briefly on a return engagement. And this time, there were five roses. And the note? It simply said, five weeks left, Jenny. And it was signed the same way. The uh, ultimate admirer. Whose name is Death. Well, the week after, there were four roses, and then there were three. You telegraphed me from Big Springs, didn't you? That was a week ago. It was down to two roses then. And then when I came here, there was that single rose. I know with it? No, no, this time. A hand holding a gun at that window. Somebody tried to kill me. Oh, no, I doubt that. <laughs> Much too close range for anyone to miss. My guess is you just have a jealous lover that's trying to even the score by scaring. Have you any idea who? <laughs> who is it? Me, Jenny. It's Eddie Howard, my companyist. You could better have a talk with him. What would he know?
How is she feeling? Rotten. I suggest that she too want to talk to it elsewhere. Jenny, Cal Breckenridge is in Deadwood. Cal? Where did you see him? Over at the theater. I was talking to Mr. Kruger about tonight's performance. Who's Cal Breckenridge? It couldn't be Cal. Do you mind letting me in on this? Cal Breckenridge was... was an admirer of mine once. And when our relationship changed, he, uh, he took it very hard. He's been following Jenny for a long time. I think you'd better have a little talk with Mr. Breckenridge. Be careful, Mr. Slade. Cal can be a very dangerous man. I don't know what's worse, a dangerous man or a dangerous woman. Oh, I should like to marry if I could ever find a really handsome fellow suited to my mind. should like to marry if I could ever find a really handsome fellow suited to my mind. You're the detective named Slade, right? That's right. My name's Kruger. I own this place. I don't want any trouble. You expecting Jenna to pray to sing here tonight? Well, that's what I'm paying her for. You better help me try to find out who's trying to kill her. Nobody's trying to kill Jenny to pray, Slade. I'm surprised that you think so. She hired me to think so. She hired you for publicity. Smart woman, Jenny. Staging that little scene at the hotel, we'll pack this hall tonight. Ha! Oh, don't tell me you could tear yourself away from Madame Dupre. I want to talk with you, Monica. Alone. How does it feel to be in love with a big-time singer? I'm here on business, Monica. You know perfectly well why Jenna Dupre sent for me. How could I miss? She's written it in lipstick all over the front of your shirt. She was upset, crying. I had to comfort her. Oh, sure. Well, I have to hand it to you, Slade. You certainly give your clients their money's worth. Now, listen, Monica. There's been a man seen around here by the name of Breckenridge. You know who he is? Uh-huh. Well, is he here now? Yep. Can you point him out to me? I can. But the question is, should I? He's a gambler and a gunman, Slade. You better stay away from him. He's over there. Thank you, honey. Your name Breckenridge? Who wants to know? Slave, private and confidential investigations. I have a strong aversion to detectives, Slade. I suggest you go someplace else. I want to know why you've been following Jenny Dupre. You heard me, mister. Get out. Have you ever been dealt a dead man's hand? Hmm? Maybe you'd like to deal me one. Aces and eights. I, uh... Heard about the attempt on Jenny's life. I had nothing to do with it. How long since she gave you the gate? And that has nothing to do with it either. If I'd wanted to kill Jenny, I'd have done it a long time ago, when I was still hurting. Now I feel nothing. And why have you been following her? Wherever Jenny goes, you'll find people. People and money. Separating the one from the other is my business. Jenny Dupre was married once, wasn't she? A man named Farron. Frank Farron. 
She left him about four years ago. That's when I came into the picture. Briefly. Where would this Frank Farron be now? I wouldn't know. You'd have to ask Jenny or Eddie Howard. I never met the man myself. Where did Eddie Howard come from? As far as I know, he's always been around. He used to be a famous concert pianist. Uh, she treats him like dirt. Are you want me for something more? Shh. Having that detective around is bad for business. Get him out of here. If he isn't doing anything I can arrest him for. He will. Just wait. I'll pick a fight with him, and that'll give you an excuse to throw him out. Don't be surprised if I don't buy all your story. I've got a hunch we'll be talking again soon. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kruger started the fight. Mr. Slade was minding his own business. That's right, Marshal. What'll I do? Why don't you try arresting Mr. Kruger? I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> of course not. He'd cut off your free beers. Why did you jump me anyway? I... I guess I made a mistake. Guess maybe you did. And you're fired. <laughs> it's too late. I just quit. Jenny. So this is what Deadwood calls a theater. Nothing more than a common saloon. Where is the proprietor? I must have everyone out of here at once before I can rehearse. Eddie, go find uh, Kruger, what's his name? Tell him I want everyone to leave immediately because I am not giving any free performances. Jenny. What are you doing here? I own the gay lady. I had to see you again, Jenny. Slade! Run along, darling. She might want to be uh, comforted again. I didn't mean for it to happen like this. I was going to wait until after the performance, and then... And then what? I still love you, Jenny. Slade, I, I want to go back to my hotel. Jenny, I didn't know that War Kruger was Frank Farron until I saw him today. I, I didn't know how to tell you. You keep out of my sight. I should have become suspicious when he offered me so much money to come to Deadwood. Twice what I normally get. Slade, I divorced Frank because I was afraid of him. You think he's responsible for sending you those notes? I accepted the Deadwood engagement six weeks ago. He knew I was coming here then. Well, he could have hired someone to send you those roses. What about Eddie Howard? What about him? Well, I heard he was a famous concert pianist. Was is right. Eddie's a has-been. He's lucky I keep him busy. Well, young lady, my advice to you is to get the first stage out of Deadwood in the morning. Ooh, you underestimate yourself, Mr. Slade. If you were around to protect me, I have no reason to leave now. Besides, Jenny Dupre has never walked out in a performance yet. <laughs> Who's Monica? An acquaintance of mine. Why? You were thinking of her. Matter of fact, I was. <laughs> Mr. Prey has just entered the theater and is in her dressing room. The performance will start very shortly. Get out. Get out. 
Please, Jenny. I've got to talk to you. We have nothing to talk about. Now, you get out of here. No, Jenny. I've waited too long for you this. You get out or I'll scream. Don't scream. You've got to give me a chance. A chance to what? To kill me? No, Jenny. Tell you that I still love you. I sent these. Didn't you read my note? From your ultimate and... stand it anymore. I loved her. And she laughed. I gave up a career for her and she, she treated me like a servant. Like a dog. I've dreamed for a long time of killing her. I knew who Kruger was. I wanted to make it look like he'd killed her. I put the card in the flowers that he'd given her. And you must be the one who slipped me that Mickey and messed up my office. I just wanted to put you off the track. Thank you, Marshal. Come along, Mr. Howard. Hi, dear. I better go and tell him now. There'll be no show tonight. No, no. No, wait. Uh, Monica, would you help me? It's Monica that they want to hear sing anyway. There will be a short delay. Miss Jenny Dupre will still appear here tonight. But by special request, we will first hear from our own songbird, Monica Bristol. Shotgun slay. 